Hey everybody, traveling with the Tompkins here, and uh, this is an instructional video on how to change your brakes out on your trailer. Uh, one of the big reasons I'm doing this video is for my family. They all have similar trailers. Uh, two of them have similar trailers. And uh, short and sweet to the point, I have a 5,200 pound Dexter axle with uh, 12 times two, so 12 inch diameter with two inch thick brakes. All right, so first things first, uh, it's a good time while you're here. Go ahead and check your tires. I'm gonna flip this camera around so you can see your tires. Maybe I won't. So you'll notice here, I got a bubble right here and I can actually push on it with my hand. Uh, so it's a good time to check your tires. Go ahead and make sure that uh, everything's good. I'm gonna actually replace this tire because I had a tire like that blow in Las Vegas and took off this whole side right here and all the wiring that was up underneath it got pulled out. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and replace that. The other thing I wanna mention is now, if you go on Dexter's website, the brakes, which are these right here, they want $198 to replace this. Now it's cheaper just to go, go ahead and get the whole kit. Don't just do brake pads, it's not worth it. Go to e-trailer. I got these brakes, they're original Dexter product. They're genuine Dexter replacement parts. And uh, they cost me $39 for this whole kit, okay? Comes with the bolts and everything. Also something to think of while you're doing this is go ahead and replace the bearings on the inside. And we'll go over a little bit more about that. Um, AP Solutions sent me these, they didn't even charge me. Uh, one of the guys there, uh, it follows us and really hooked us up. So I just want to say thank you to him and uh, I won't mention his name but um, So here we go. I've already done this tire and I've already done the other side of the trailer So we're gonna work on this last one today So first thing you want to do go ahead and get on that axle go ahead and jack it up Get that tire, uh, not off the tire, off the ground, but just get some pressure off it. We're gonna go ahead and loosen the lug nuts and then we'll crank it up off the ground. Okay, now a good thing to note, I told you that it cost about 100 or 225 bucks for me to replace everything. Uh, I should mention that also included the tools I needed to do it. So one of those tools being this little grease press here. So what happens is, spin this on here a little bit. You put your bearings in here and then uh, it basically packs the bearings for you with new grease, okay? Seven bucks, AutoZone, 100% worth it. You can't try to push the grease in it. You gotta really force it through. And you'll see that later in the video. Um, I had to buy a new gun. My old gun was kind of uh, trash. Uh, so I got a new grease gun uh, that included, uh, I got some other stuff. Two things of grease. And I want to point out the grease that you should be using is red and tacky grease. Best stuff in the world. Uh, there's other stuff that's even more expensive, but this is stuff that you need. You'll see why as we go. Everybody I know recommends it. Axle engineers, all kinds of stuff. So uh, mechanics, they'll agree. I also got these bearing things to push in the bearings and make them flat. Don't need them. Uh, so, and that can, it included four cans of brake cleaner. So for all that, for the 225. I was gonna do a time lapse and show this, but then I realized uh, this might get a little tricky and you might be worried about doing it. So, first off, get yourself a nice clean area that you're gonna be able to lay some tools and lay some bearings down and uh, not make a mess. Do not forget, you're gonna need some rubber gloves. Uh, you're, it, this grease gets everywhere. So, go ahead and just get some rubber gloves out. Probably go through two or three pair on each tire. So, it's on, we'll go ahead and pop this off. Okay, grab a rubber mallet. It's probably the best way to do it. 
Now, AP products, they send you this bag for your bearings. It also includes uh, the cotter pin to lock your crown bolt back in. Also, it sends you a new grease hub and bolts for your lug nuts. I'm not gonna be using anything out of there except for the bearings, just the way this is set up. So, here we go. Pop the hub off with a rubber, rubber mallet, and I need a new box of rags, I've just used this one. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got some new rags. Here we go. Just got the hub off. Right, go ahead. We're gonna clean this one out just because I'm gonna re reuse these. Um, I'll keep the rubber gaskets off the new ones just in case these dry rot in the future or something like that. But the reason I'm reusing these are they just go out a lot easier, fit right, and the new ones are really, really tight and kind of a pain. I had a problem with the last ones over there, so it's easier to use these. Never had a problem with them falling off or anything, so they're good. All right, that was cleaned up. Now, I won't be using the cotter pin because on my trailer, I have a lock washer, all right? So, I don't know the exact terminology for the washer, but this is pried off with a screwdriver. Instead of a cotter pin, this is what holds my bolt from coming off the trailer show you here I'll clean it off you can see it has a flat side that's what keeps the uh, washer from spinning keeping the bolt from spinning okay that's that next the bolt take this off Should be just hand tight, and it was. It's got a little caught up here, so I'm gonna use this to help me get it off. Okay, bolt, clean it up. Throw it on your rag, don't lose it. If you want to lay this stuff out in order on how it comes out, Go for it. All right, screwdriver. Now, next is a little washer in here. Pop this thing out. It's a washer, and then you have the be the small bearing behind it, the outside bearing. And usually it comes out pretty easy. This one's fighting me. You might be able to pull this off. There we go. All right. Washer, then the bearing. Okay. I don't need this bearing anymore. I'm gonna sit it aside. I'm gonna keep one or two of the bearings just in case I have a problem while we're on the road. I have a backup while I'm ordering parts. Okay? Why not? Can't hurt. Just clean one up. Washer. Hub's loose. So now I'm gonna lay something down here. Pull the hub off. Alright. Sit it up. Now, two of my brakes were good, two of them were bad far as there's grease all over my magnet and the inside of this wheel okay the inside seal blew and that's probably because someone tried to fill this fill nozzle with minor uh, auto fill like you can uh, easy fill and it probably blew the bearing out with too much pressure so we're not gonna do that we're gonna fix that go ahead and take this back bearing out. I have a cat visiting me, which you might see here in a minute. Turn this thing over. Take a hammer. Screwdriver. <laughs> There's literally a cat hanging out by the camera. Straight cat. Uh, it's pretty nice. Comes up every once in a while. And there he comes. Pop. This bearing out. Only thing holding it in is that washer, which I'm replacing all of that so I can just kind of beat this thing out. Okay. 
usually it comes out pretty easy. Ah, right, here it is. Got it out. Basically, I'm just taking this on the inside, pushing down on the bearing, and pushing it out. You see here? Pushed it out of here. And here's the bearing that I just knocked out. The seal, which had gotten blown out. So, throw those over to the side. I can use them. Now we're gonna clean out this hub, get all the old grease out. Make sure you got lots of rags. If you've never done this before, you're pretty amazed how easy this is actually. It's a little time consuming just because you're cleaning stuff, but it's not hard. Uh, it's not strenuous. It's not, you know, anybody can do it. It doesn't really matter who you are. Uh, to clean this thing out. There's lots of grease in there. There's a little reservoir in there that holds the grease for the bearing. The bearings. So that uh, as they heat up, the grease can move and expand. And, that kind of stuff. Keep your bearings nice and lubed. So once we get this out, we'll end up cleaning the hub too. And that's where the brake clean comes in. Stuff like that. So almost got most of it. I want to make sure that there's no old grease in here because uh, A, I don't know who put this grease in, what kind of grease it was, and I just know the stuff I have is the best stuff out there. So. And I don't know if there's any metal shavings or any uh, life left in this grease. So, all right, we're clean. See, I got all the stuff out of there. I'll do a close up here in a minute. All right, you can see here, I got a lot of brake dust in here. I'm gonna break that stuff out, I'm gonna scrape it down. You can see all the grease, grease on the where the magnet grabs, you can see the grease on the magnet itself. It's not good. All right, so now we're gonna go back to, I just cleaned this off. It's one of the reasons why you don't just get new brake shoes uh, because you could take this off and then you got new shoes and you realize your magnet's bad or um, You know numerous things could have happened now The reason why I, my shoes actually aren't that bad, but I took it to a dealership because I figured they would know what they were doing And they told me they're auto self-adjusting, right? So we're not self-adjusting but automatically adjust and My brake shoes must be worn and in reality, I found out that they are self adjust or they're auto adjusting, but I found out that 99% of brakes that are auto adjusting, they don't actually work. Uh, give them a couple weeks, they get dirty, they just don't work. Uh, so I had no brakes, I thought, and in reality, I just need to adjust the back. I got so many miles on this thing, it was better for me just to take everything off and just redo it. So uh, my biggest thing was the bearings I wanted to get done. So here I'm going to use a uh, wrench here, and we are going to take off this these five bolts that hold this whole thing on.
That's it. That's all you gotta do. Whole assembly comes down. Now, we're gonna cut these two wires here. Done. Get rid of the old brakes. That's how easy that was. Now, one thing I do is I take my grease gun, which fell in the rocks. Get that rocks out of there. Okay. Pump this on here. Show you why. Like I said, I don't want any old grease getting in there. So I'm gonna take this. And when you, when these axles are easy fill axles, there's a little hole back here. And that's where my new grease is gonna come out. So you can see there's still some old grease in there. I'm gonna go until I see my red stuff. Oh, aren't doing them. There we go. See my red stuff. Take that off. And now I know I got all new grease inside my axle. Well, in the tube anyway. So when I do go to, sorry about the camera. When I do go to fill it, I won't be pushing old grease inside. Okay, get rid of that. Get some more brake clean. Clean all this up. Watch your wires. Clean all this up. Just to, can't hurt, right? There's no old stuff in there. Clean rag, wipe stuff down. Okay. Now, all right, here we go. What I do is get a little bit of grease. I'll put some on here just so I have it. Take it and we'll put it around this back edge right here, okay? There's the thin coat around this back edge because this is where your new seal is going to sit and you don't want to beat up that new seal going on there, okay? Then you can try to rub some around the axle. We're gonna fill the cavity, which will fill all this, but at least I know there's some on there in the meantime. Okay. Now the hub. All right, go cleaning rag down. I got my hub, which is clean. Okay. Now. This is where this handy dandy tool comes in, okay? I'm gonna get my new bearings out. First is the inside bearing. Put that on top of there. Screw the top down on it. Now the big bearing takes a good amount of grease. Hopefully I won't have to replace my grease gun. For some reason my grease gun has a really hard time going onto this. We go. I'm just gonna pump some grease into this thing. Check it periodically. So you can see it. Nothing yet. A little bearing goes a lot easier than the big bearing. All right, here we go. See that? See how the grease has pushed through the bearing? 
Now you know your bearing's full. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Which I'm gonna use this because it's a pain. There we go. Go ahead and spin this off. Make sure you got gloves on for this. Don't ruin your hands, don't. This red tacky will make, will go everywhere. You can see how tacky it is, it just sticks to stuff. Now, go ahead and take that bearing out. It's loaded with grease on the inside. I'm gonna take some of this grease, I'm gonna tilt this. Put my finger down in there, I'm gonna take this grease. Go ahead and wipe it all down inside here, where it's gonna go. Make sure everything's coated before you put it together. Don't, don't just put the bearing in there and expect as you drive to start greasing it. And just do it ahead of time, do it right. Okay, get a nice, good amount in there. Get it down in there as far as you can. Then take it, get some from the middle, rub that whole bearing. Get it nice and greased up on the outside too, okay? Once you get that, go ahead and drop it in there. Now, I'm gonna change my gloves out so I can do the seal. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Now, according to the book in your manual, it's gonna tell you that the seal needs to be inside a press to go in. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna be gentle, and we're gonna put it in there without breaking anything. It goes in like this, okay? Just like that. Grab a hammer. Just nice and gently. Try to keep it. Try to keep it level. Take your time. Take your time, get it nice and flush. And you just set it without the use of a press. And clean this off. You don't want no grease in here. Okay. You don't want no grease on the inside of this. This is where that magnet drags. You want to inspect your drum too. I don't have any ridges where the brake pads touch. I do have some ridges where the magnet is and uh, this is the only tire that had that. So they're not too bad. It's not too rough. I'm not too worried about that. Any worse though, I'd probably replace that. All right, new brakes. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. Pretty simple. Go ahead and grab your new brakes. Keep in mind there are left hand and right hand brakes. So make sure you got the right ones. Slide this thing on there. That magnet goes down, and then uh, behind here is your brake adjuster. So we will adjust that from behind once the brake gets on. So we're gonna leave it closed for now, okay? So brakes on there. And they gave me new parts, so I'm gonna use these parts. And these are what's gonna bolt it back on. Now read the book, read your manual. Dexter requires these things to be between, I think it's 40, 30 and 50 or 40 and 50. I just go right to 50. Like, keep them tight. And uh, I'm gonna time lapse this while I put this on and then I'll bring you back up. All right, good job. Brakes are on. Now, we're going to come back here. We're going to go ahead and connect these wires. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes to which because as you apply brakes, it just completes the circuit. So, you're good either way. Go ahead and trim this out. I think it's a 16. No. 16. 
There we go. There's a 14. Okay. Starting to snow. Give a good tug, make sure that it's on there. Actually, I'm gonna do this one too while I'm here. This is actually like the hardest part because you gotta get back in here. That and tighten in the brakes. Yeah, I recommend do your own. It's not hard. Uh, you don't have to be a pro. Don't let the dealerships take all your money. Take all that money and maybe take a friend out or something, you know? on there good. Probably gonna grease all over my arm. Got those crimped down, wires on nice and tight. These are heat shrink. Uh, I probably could use a lighter. I'm using this just because it's what I have. Don't burn your camper down. Careful what you're doing. You'll be all right. All right. Good. Now your brakes are reconnected. I'll bring you back around front, and we're gonna finish this thing up. We're almost done. So, that inner bearing is already in that hub because we already did that. We're ready to go with that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the outer bearing, throw it on here, spin this back down. And you'll see this one fills up a lot quicker. almost done and I didn't really do too much time lapse so this is about how long it actually takes to do it and even my time lapse wasn't more than probably a couple minutes so that's not good I don't think I'm done with it all right same thing rub the grease on the outside just take it from the inside of the bearing rub it on the outside 
Okay, sit it on a clean surface because that's going to go in here in a second. Wipe your hands off. Grab our nice clean hub. We're going to put this thing on now. Pretty easy. Okay. Now, what I want to do first is hook this thing up. And since I, the whole front end is open, I'm not worried about blowing that back bearing off. There's a good chance we could pump some grease into that cavity though. Okay. Spin it a little bit. Good for now. Put this bearing in. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to take this washer, this nut, okay, washer on. Okay, and then the bolt. Now they want you to crank this down to, I think it's 40 pounds. Uh, I don't have a socket that's gonna fit my torque wrench that hard, that big. So we're gonna do a hand, or we're gonna do as tight as we can to seat the bearings, and then we'll back off it. Okay. Here we go. Back it off. Now I'd be done there normally. That's it. That's all I would do. But I want to see some more grease because I like to make sure I get it right. And I like to make sure I put enough in there. So I'm gonna take it back out. At least just the the bolt and the washer, not the not the bearing. And I will reset it just to double check that once I do this, I didn't pull any bearings out of place. Now I know my bearings are where they need to be. I don't want to blow that rubber gasket out the back. That's what apparently happened last time. The mechanic probably just had everything connected, washer, everything, so nothing could escape. Pumped this grease into here, and blew that rubber seal out the back. What happens is once you blow that rubber seal out the back, what's keeping your grease in there? What's keeping the dirt out? Nothing. So I'm gonna pump a little bit, spin a little bit. So I see some grease start coming out the front, and then I'm gonna seal it up. Kind of keep that seated. All right. Starting to see some grease now. I think we're good. Okay. Started seeing some grease kind of come out. Go ahead and put this back on there. Keep this stuff clean while you're working on it. Keep you from having to clean all your stuff every time. Definitely want your stuff clean. No little rocks and stuff like that. If you do something different, that's fine. Just remember, keep an eye on your stuff. Preventive maintenance goes a long way. You know, I didn't have to do this right now. I could have waited. Then I probably would have needed to replace my drums. I could have seized up my bearings. Could have had all kinds of issues. Now, I won't. All right, back off the nut. It's loose. Hand tight. Locking pin.
we're done. That's it. Clean up. Uh, other than that, just go ahead and I gotta take my tire to get it replaced, but just put your tire back on, torque it down. Should tell you what my trailer says, torque it down to uh, 100, 100 foot pounds of torque. So once I get the tire replaced, I'm gonna put it back on, drop the trailer, we're done. Oh, sorry, you gotta adjust the brakes. Just kidding. All right, remember that little thing in there I was telling you about? We're gonna do a quick thing and then I'm just gonna end it and I'm not gonna say goodbye again, okay? I already did that. Let's, uh, let's put the old dust cap back on, okay? Thought you guys were done, huh? All right. It's on. See it flush. Easy enough. All right, we're gonna move the camera around the back and uh, we're gonna adjust this. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna adjust that lever in there, spread the brakes out until you hear the brakes start grabbing, okay? Not a lot, just barely feel the brakes. Right now, I got a little something going on in there, but we're good. I think that's just a little bit of scraping, but we're gonna open them up. And once I feel them, I'm gonna back off just a hair. So here we go. Right in here. It's actually gonna be the far hole on this side. And when you're done, make sure you zip tie these up. Give them a little bit of room so the axle can bounce. But go ahead and zip tie them up. And then also, once you're done adjusting, go ahead and put the plugs in back here. Keeps the dust out from getting any brakes. So for this, all you need is a screwdriver. You're gonna put it in that hole. You're gonna find where the clicker is, and you'll hear it right there. You're just gonna basically walk the screwdriver in there and you'll hear it. And move the brakes while you do it. You don't wanna tighten it up too much to where the brakes lock up on you. You basically just barely want your brakes touching, okay? You can't see it from out here, but I'm, I'm constantly spinning the drum out here, okay? I wanna hear that change in tone where I can hear the brakes start grabbing. touching the uh, drum on the inside. Now keep in mind, when you do this, after the first 100 miles, you're gonna wanna do this again. So for that case, all you gotta do is pull the plugs out, the dust caps you're putting on, jack up one wheel, or use some two by sixes to roll the back tire or the front tire onto, which will automatically lift the other tire off the ground, which is what I do. And then just make sure that your wheel's spinning nice and free not grab it on the brakes all that kind of stuff make sure that once the new brakes are installed you don't go crazy on them go to 40 miles an hour and gradually come down to 20 miles an hour using the brakes keep doing that gradually you don't want to overheat the brakes and you don't want to fry what you've just done get them too hot they'll expand and literally lock your tires up okay Basically, just keep digging in here. You'll hear it when it clicks. Getting there. If you don't adjust these, the problem is your brakes will be too loose. So even when you do hit the brakes, you have to apply more on your brake controller to make more bolts go to it, to make your brakes open up harder. And that's no good. It's kind of a pain, but you'll get it. I'm starting to, I think I'm just starting to touch. A little more just to make sure. I'm good. I've got just a hair more tension on it than I did before. It still spins, but I can hear it touching. And that's what I'm looking for, okay? So go ahead, that's it. I'm gonna replace the tire and hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like it, comment it, do whatever you do. 
Uh, but I hope you learned something. All right, see everybody later.